the street is full of eccentric stuff. And uh, so it's appropriate that way. And there is a bit of cynicism because I hate litter. I, I think that it's so irresponsible to drop stuff all over the place. And yet at the same time, I find it fascinating. I find it beautiful. And then, of course, it speaks of the throwaway culture that we have. It really does have that cynical edge to it as well. When I was a student at Carnegie Mellon, I really was taken by the Dada artists of the early 20th century, and, and they were wild. And they responded cynically to what was going on in uh, the world. And in the early 21st century, I just was going wild with what I was reading in newspapers and seeing on the media, and I just felt the same way. Uh, so much so that one Sunday I was reading the New York Times, and I just got so filled with anxiety that I got a razor blade, and I just started slashing that paper. I didn't want to read what it had to say, and I started seeing colors and shapes. And, and that was the first time I uh, made a, a scan of, uh, of a collage. And it made me feel so good that I could obliterate the headlines. I didn't have to read the nasty stuff that I had to say. The wars of the, uh, of the 21st century are just crazy. So uh, I turned that into art. And I, 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 can, I exhibited those, and I, I thought, I'm really a neo-Dadaist, and that's what I put in my artist statement. After that, that experience with the New York Times, I started thinking uh, about trash, because it, it just, uh, in New York, there's no uh, shortage of trash. Uh, and I, I thought, like an archaeologist, I might not have to excavate to find out something about current American culture. So I started going through, we lived in Hell's Kitchen, and I started going through the streets of Hell's Kitchen picking up trash. This was about four years ago. And bringing it back and scanning it, ranging it, and uh, so that, that was the beginning of this project, which I got back to in 2011. So I spent most of 2011 picking up trash all over Manhattan. So I was the guy who would put on a latex glove and uh, uh, unzip the little plastic baggie and go up and down the streets, picking up uh, trash out of the gutters and sidewalks and so on. Um, and I didn't pick up anything. I was very selective about this trash. I, I picked up stuff that I thought would tell me something about where I was picking it up, the location. And I picked up stuff that I thought had good color, good shapes. And actually, as I was picking it up, sometimes the f idea for the scan that I was going to make started to form in my mind. So I put many bags of trash from all over. I, I started in uh, Chelsea, I went to Harlem, I went down to Battery Park, I went everywhere uh, that I thought was uh, recognizable and some places that weren't so recognizable. Um, I, I picked up trash in front of the United Nations building, the Empire State Building. I, I did uh, Lincoln Center. Uh, I tried to do Times Square, but the trash there was so common, it wasn't very interesting because it was mostly food-related tourists throwing down pretty ordinary stuff. But uh, I got really great stuff, Lower East Side, Upper West Side, Upper East Side. Um, I did the New York City Marathon. Uh, I did really fancy hotels like the Pierre Hotel in uh, on Fifth Avenue. I did some uh, famous apartment buildings like the Dakota where John Lennon was shot. So I went all over Chinatown, the City Hall, so on, so on. And uh, then I would, if I wasn't coming back to Ohio, I would mail these bags of trash here. And uh, then when I got 
home, I would unzip the bag and I remembered, uh, strangely enough, I re really had a strong memory of what was in each bag. And so much so that I would empty out the trash and I would remember some little piece and I would sort through until I found it. Anyway, then I would uh, arrange the trash. People say, do you just dump it on the scanner? And of course, no, it's a lot more complex than that. I select, well, it's kind of reselecting because I selected it off the streets of Manhattan. Then I select what I think is going to tell the best story of a particular area. And then I arrange it and rearrange it and rearrange it until I get the scan that I want. And sometimes it, 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 it's maybe a dozen times and finally the trash says, look, this is too messy. You've got to start again. And I always listen to that trash because it tells me exactly what I need to do. I, I talk about so much trash in New York, but strangely enough, there's not, I mean, it's really clean. It's a clean city for how many people are actually on that island uh, every day. But yes, I can find lots of trash. And I did have competition once in a while because I would get to a location and the, the, the street cleaner would have just gone by and it, there was my <laughs> raw material taken away. And a lot of corporations have private people uh, who come and keep those uh, sidewalks clean. For example, I went to the Museum of Modern Art and there's very little trash on that block, but I found exactly what I, I, I wanted. At first when I started this, I was self-conscious because it's a little weird putting on a rubber glove and going into the gutters while people are walking by. But I got over that pretty quickly. And I was concentrating so much on picking up the, the trash that I really didn't notice anything about what people were doing around me. And my daughter, Megan, videoed me picking up trash. And when I looked at the clips that she had, I was, it was kind of confirmed that no one paid too much attention to this old guy in the, in the gutter with, with a rubber glove, you know, lurking around picking up trash. So uh, only one person stopped me and he said, hey, what are you doing? And I turned around and, and I said, I'm an artist. He said, ah, I figured something like that. He said, and he made me explain what this whole thing was. He got pretty interested in it, but that was only one person. I looked at that trash on the streets of West 53rd Street, on West 53rd Street, and it just spoke to me. It, uh, I knew exactly what the scan was going to look like, so when I got back to my studio, dumped that out beside my scanner, picked out exactly the trash that I knew was going to work, there wasn't much of it, and one scan, it was done. Um, most places, though, uh, there's a lot of trash and you have to start figuring out what's going to tell the best story about that location and what's going to look kind of beautiful because this trash, oddly enough, even though it's stuff in the gutter and it smells bad sometimes, it photographs well. It's rather photogenic and so I try to make it kind of beautiful and at the same time expressive of something. So it takes me a while. I start arranging and I, I push the button and I have a preview scan on my monitor. And I look at it and I think it needs to be adjusted so I rearrange it and so on. Um, the Lincoln Center scan was really interesting because I picked up very little trash in that whole Lincoln Center Plaza. There was almost nothing there, but uh, there was a, a little pane of plastic about three and a half inches by five inches. And I knew there was something about that little piece of plastic. It was, just, it was speaking to me uh, in New York. And I picked up um, pieces of trash and a program uh, inviting people for an open rehearsal of the New York Philharmonic, and I thought that is the whole key to this. And I arranged at the bottom of the scan uh, that program so that it kind of looked like the shape of the 1960s style buildings 
of uh, Lincoln Center. And then the, the uh, natural stuff like uh, uh, seed pods and, and uh, feathers, and there was some string. I, I kind of arranged that like a, a really rhapsodic uh, uh, design coming out of that building shape at the bottom. And when I scanned it the first time, the light reflected off that little piece of plastic in such a way that it was so beautifully mysterious. So it just seemed to me that it was the, the intent of the composer of the music playing in, in those buildings, that, that, uh, that something about music that you really can't express visually because it's, it's an auditory experience. But I think I captured something of what that music was. So it's a complex thing as I'm arranging and rearranging, which I did in that scan, but I never touched that plastic because it was reflecting magic. <laughs> I was surprised when I tried to collect trash in Central Park. I would go from the west side to the east side, uh, cutting across from 81st Street to 79th Street. There was not a thing to pick up. And I thought, this is kind of amazing. This is a park filled with people, no trash. Uh, I had that experience at the High Line and, and in front of museums. So you'll see the scans of the Whitney Museum, for example, and the Museum of Modern Art. There's not much trash in them. Uh, and that was a, a little bit surprising uh, to me. Um, it was surprising also the number of bottle caps drinking straws and soda cans and water bottles that were everywhere. Um, each location had um, specific things that were specific to that location, but almost every location had bottle caps, straws, and stuff. That, that surprised me because it, it, you go to a really fancy neighborhood on the Upper West Side, bottle caps, drinking straws, it, it's, so it's everywhere. I guess we Americans just walk around drinking all the time. It's funny how uh, hypnotic this whole experience is. When I'm walking along the streets, I, I don't even notice what's around me. And it's also strange that I'll see a piece of trash, and it starts to say something. And I, uh, for example, one time in the Lower East Side, I, I, I saw this broken amber glass, and it just looked beautiful to me. Uh, must have been a beer bottle, and it was still stuck to the label. But I didn't pick it up because I didn't see anything right there that I thought was interesting. I walked two blocks away from that, and it kept haunting me. And it was almost like a magnet. It drew me back. I had to go get that. And um, so the, 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 the trash itself is picked up for its color, its shape. Sometimes there's, there's something unique uh, 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 in wording on some of the trash. I love to, to, to see what is uh, written by people. Uh, there's one scan, it has a, a heart-shaped memo, and it has a list of things that the person who dropped it wanted to do, and it starts off with uh, uh, get guitar, and then it says uh, something about practicing the guitar, and then it says take a shower, <laughs> and then it says put on black boots. I mean, <laughs> you think, who had to tell themselves to take a shower? The trash sort of... Um, sparks the detective in me, and I would think it would be the same for people who look at the scans. You look and you see what, what made that fall down in this location, and who must have dropped that, and what were they up to, and why did they have this stuff? And people uh, drop things like prescription bottles, and you think, why would they be dropping their prescription bottles and their hospital release tags? You'll find those in the scans with their names and, and all of that. Uh, so you, you start picturing what were they in the hospital for? 
uh, I picked up uh, photographs of a family, uh, a mother and father and a little kid, and it was just interesting because it was, there it was, and I put it in the scan, and I showed this to a friend of mine in New York, and she said, oh my word, those are people I know. <laughs> She's on Broadway. <laughs> It's fascinating to me. I'm, I'm doing other things. I'm drawing, I'm painting, but this, this is fascinating to me. And uh, you, uh, you I've, I've done 92 of these scans in probably 80 locations around Manhattan. I haven't exhausted this at all. And across the East River and the Harlem River and New York Harbor, there are the other boroughs, Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx. So I could continue this for the rest of my life. And who knows, I might even wind up in my hometown, Youngstown, <laughs> lurking around. <laughs>